Hello everyone, welcome to our tutorial on how to use Iger. Iger is MarkForge's slicing software for 3D printing. In this video, we will be covering the basics and how you can get your part printing on your MarkForge 3D printer. Let's start by uploading an STL file to Iger. As you can see on my screen, this is the Iger website and the import STL button is located in the top right corner of the screen. Select import STL and you can either drop your file directly onto this blue region or you can click the blue box to open a file explorer window to navigate to your file. Once the part you want uploaded is selected, click open. You can also upload multiple parts at once and do a batch upload. If you would like your part to be imported to a certain folder in your Iger library, you can select that here. Select import and your part will be populated onto a build plate. Next, you will want to orient your part for printing. This part will be printed in layers from the build plate and upwards in the Z direction. For this part, there are internal channels that were made into a teardrop shape to avoid printing supports inside the channels. So I will want this surface in contact with the build plate. Select the surface you want in contact with the build plate to orient your part accordingly. Next, we will take a look at the general tab settings. Here you can select what materials you want to print the part with. This is a list of all the materials MarkForge offers, both composite and metal. Keep in mind that not all of these will be compatible with your printer. I will be printing this part in Onyx. Under reinforcement material, you can select which continuous fiber, if any, you want routed into your part. Keep in mind that not all of the fibers listed may be compatible with your printer. Additionally, some fibers are only compatible with the certain plastic materials. For example, the carbon fiber FR is only compatible if used with onyx FR. I would like carbon fiber in my part, but I will keep it at none for now. Next, select your printer type and this will adjust the displayed print bed accordingly. Next, let's go over the settings tab. Here you can adjust the layer height. If you decrease the layer height, the part will take longer to print but it can improve the vertical resolution of the part for a smoother finish. Increasing the layer height, the part will print faster but there will be a decrease in resolution. An important thing to note is when using continuous fiber reinforcement, the layer height will be set depending on the fiber selected to ensure the fiber can be routed properly. I will select carbon fiber now for this part, so the part can only be printed at a 0.125 mm layer height. Here you can adjust the units of the part between metric and imperial. Because STLs are unitless files, when a part is imported, it does not know what units the part was created in. There may be times when a part will import and appear really small. This is because Iger is automatically set to metric units and the units have to be adjusted to Imperial. You can also scale your part with an Iger. If you only need a scale model printed, you can make those adjustments here. This setting allows you to turn supports on and off. If turned off, no supports will be generated or printed. This may come in handy if you plan to pause your print to embed hardware into your part. You will want to turn off supports to prevent support from being printed in the cavity where you will be inserting your hardware. When turned off, it will show a warning, but you can proceed with printing. Additionally, if you're printing a long thin part that may be susceptible to warping, you can generate a brim by turning on the use brim setting. A brim can allow for better print bed adhesion and can help prevent warping on your part. Next, let's click over to the infill tab. Here we can adjust the infill of the part. Please note that the default settings are what is recommended by MarkForge. First, you can change the infill pattern, 
Triangular is the default, but other types can be used. Next, you can customize the infill density. 37% is the default density. You can increase the infill, which may help produce a stronger part, but it will also increase the cost, weight, and print time. You can decrease the density for the opposite effect. As you can see by the thickened part of the scroll bar, this is the range that the density is allowed to be set to. This range differs between the infill pattern types. Next, you can adjust the roof and floor layers. The roof and floor are the top and bottom most layers of your part that are printed solid. In between the roof and floor layers are when the infill layers are printed. Increasing this value can help produce a stronger part if needed. The wall layers create the wall or shell of the part in the XY direction. If the wall layer is set to two, every layer will have two solid outlines of the part before the infill is printed. Increasing the wall layers can help increase part strength. Once all the settings are customized, click save to start slicing the part. Once the part is sliced, the part details will be generated which shows details like the part volume, print time, cost, etc. Now let's navigate to the x-ray tab. This allows you to see an x-ray view of the part. It will show you where the fiber will be routed in blue and where support material will be printed in purple. You will want to do a final review of your part here before printing especially if you are printing with a continuous fiber reinforcement. If a continuous fiber was selected, Iger will automatically generate fiber layers using the sandwich method at the top and bottom of the part. To customize it, navigate the layers using the film strip at the bottom and select the layers you want to add fiber to. Once they are selected, select Create New Override and select and add fiber. The fiber will automatically be in the isotropic fiber fill type, which means the fiber will be routed through the entire cross section. Note that small areas may not be able to route fiber. The direction the fiber is routed will alternate in this fill type. The other fiber fill type is concentric fill. Concentric fill will route the fiber along the outer walls of each layer. You can adjust the number of rings to change the amount of fiber that is used. I will be using an isotropic fill type. You can remove a fiber group by selecting the group and clicking the X on the top right corner. Once you're done, hit save to save the changes made in the x-ray view. Navigate back to the part view. Some of the part details will have changed since adjusting the fiber layers. After reviewing the details and want to proceed, hit print. Now we can prepare the build. Select the printer you will be using. Under parts and build, we can duplicate this part or we can add a different part to be printed along with this part. It will only show other parts that are compatible in material with this part. In this case, it will only show parts that are in onyx or onyx with carbon fiber. When adding parts to the build, Iger will automatically nest the parts and the build details will be updated as well.
Parts can be moved on the build plate by dragging it with your mouse and can be rotated by changing the theta value. Once the build is ready, hit print. If the printer is busy like ours, you can click add to queue to upload the job to the printer. Once your current job is finished and the bed is clear, you can now start the job directly on your printer. If your printer is available, you can select print now, which will start the print job right away. Thank you for listening.